In 2056, humanity faces a grave ecological crisis. The privileged few have sought refuge within protected air domes where purified oxygen safeguards their existence. With governments defunct, power now lies in the hands of massive corporations. Territorial and resource disputes between these entities are settled by private armies. The Nibra Corporation operates the Rubicon Space Research Station, where active efforts are being made to find solutions to the ecological crisis. From Earth, a spacecraft carrying two passengers, Nibra Corporation soldier Hannah Wagner and chemist Gavin Abbott, is sent to Rubicon. Upon reaching Rubicon, the crew contacts them and asks for their current coordinates. Monitoring inside the spacecraft indicates that the station is 150 meters away, even though it's not visible. When Rubicon appears before the astronauts, the distance shrinks to just 90 meters. The spacecraft is moving at a high speed, prompting Hannah to take control to avoid a collision with the station. Despite the Rubicon command advising against it, Hannah relies on her own abilities and successfully prevents the spacecraft from colliding with the station, completing the docking procedure. Afterward, she tries to inquire about the reason for the loss of communication from the crew, but like her, they are unable to explain the situation. In her quarters, Hannah contacts her younger sister, known as Button, residing in a barracks under strict military supervision. On Earth, clashes between rival corporations escalate, prompting an urgent alert that forces Button to cut short their conversation. Meanwhile, aboard Rubicon, a farewell gathering is held for crew members concluding their contracts and returning to Earth. During the event, Hannah and Gavin encounter scientist Dmitry Krulov and his son Danila, who regard the newcomers with evident suspicion. One of the astronauts informs Hannah of significant obstacles on the planned return route to Earth. A collision with environmental activists in the Northern Hemisphere has led to the formation of an unidentified dense fog. Consequently, the crew must alter their course and navigate around the danger zone as per instructions from the Flight Control Center. Gavin is profoundly disturbed by unfolding events, particularly because among the green activists are his close friends. Shockingly, influential relatives have sent their heir to Rubicon as punishment for his association with the protesters. Gavin discovers that crucial details about the incident are being deliberately concealed, leading him to suspect Nebra Corporation's complicity in the cover-up. While Hannah staunchly defends her leadership, Gavin insists that she is turning a blind eye to the corporation's evident misdeeds. As Danila and the remaining crew members finalize preparations for their return to Earth, they must transport Mother Culture's crucial for sustaining life on the planet. Unbeknownst to them, Hannah covertly communicates with the corporation's leadership and receives orders to expedite the mission. It comes to light that Hannah is actually an undercover operative for the corporation, tasked with stealing Dr. Dimitri's groundbreaking development, edible algae capable of generating oxygen. In a daring move, Hannah infiltrates the laboratory, only to be caught off guard by Dimitri. Their confrontation is abruptly interrupted by an urgent message from the Vesta 2 module, responsible for ferrying the crew members back home. The ship's concerned captain reports a complete loss of communication with Earth, leaving their module flying blind. Hannah exhausts every effort to restore communication with the flight control center but to no avail. Meanwhile, the module's crew grapples with the daunting task of landing without the aid of artificial intelligence, despite lacking the necessary training. Undeterred by the gravity of the situation, Hannah dons a protective suit and ventures into the unforgiving expanse of open space to repair the station's external systems. In a harrowing turn of events, she bears witness to a devastating spectacle. A series of explosions engulf the Earth, shrouding it in a dense fog of smoke that billows into the atmosphere. At that critical moment, Vesta 2 loses control, hurtling into the atmosphere and disintegrating before Hannah's anguished gaze, claiming the lives of all aboard. Overwhelmed by grief, Hannah retreats to her cabin, only to be greeted by a message from her younger sister, detailing the escalating chaos on Earth. Her sister is compelled to seek refuge in an evacuation bunker, as the corporation's grip on suppressing conflicts weakens. Matters worsen as the enigmatic fog blankets the planet, severing all communication with Earth. Consumed by sorrow, Dimitri withdraws into solitude, mourning the loss of his son. Despite Hannah's attempts to engage him in discussion about their next steps, he rebuffs her sharply. Meanwhile, Gavin conducts an analysis of the atmospheric composition of the mysterious fog, the results of which shake him to his core. Driven to despair, Gavin seeks to depart this world, sealing himself in the docking shaft and initiating depressurization. Fortunately, Hannah, aided by Dimitri, intervenes just in time to thwart his tragic attempt. As Gavin recuperates, a fresh conflict flares between Hannah and Dimitri over the ownership of the edible algae. The doctor staunchly refuses to relinquish his invention to the corporation, harboring doubts about their integrity. When Gavin regains consciousness, he frantically divulges the results of his analysis to Hannah and Dimitri. Shockingly, it transpires that the ominous fog looming over the planet is toxic, its particles systematically eroding all life on Earth. They're all dead. Okay. They're all dead. Nobody can survive this. Under the strain, Gavin begins gasping for breath, 
Succumbing to unconsciousness once more, Hannah's bitterness surfaces as she mentions her younger sister still on Earth, acknowledging their shared precarious fate as the station's oxygen supply dwindles. Dimitri reveals a glimmer of hope, the Rubicon's life support system is sustained by algae, and the combined efforts of the three of them can keep the station operational. Heartened by this revelation, Hannah finds renewed determination. Convinced that survivors endure on Earth, shielded in bunkers from the toxic fog, she resolves to establish contact with them by repairing the ISS's antiquated radio system. Despite their efforts, the signal to Earth yields no response, dampening their hopes. Gavin chastises Hannah's attempts to reach Earth, emphasizing the grim reality facing those in bunkers. Dwindling oxygen and supplies foretell a bleak future. Consumed by panic, Gavin's despair threatens to overwhelm him prompting Dimitri to caution against impulsive actions that could hasten their demise. Dimitri elucidates the station's life support mechanics. A minimum of three individuals exhaling carbon dioxide sustains the system's oxygen recycling. Gavin's recklessness jeopardizes the crew's survival, dooming them to a shared fate. In a candid exchange, Hannah enters Gavin's cabin, laying bare her soul. She confesses a lifetime spent chasing corporate approval through endless tasks, now rendered hollow and devoid of meaning. Regrets weigh heavily upon her, lamenting the dearth of time devoted to rest and joy. I think I've really screwed up this whole life thing. Gavin, with a melancholic smile, reflects on the futile struggle he and the environmental activists waged for a planet now lost to them. United in their shared grief, the couple find solace in each other's embrace, drawing strength from their bond. As the trio resigns themselves to their fate, they diligently tend to the station's needs. While examining the algae, Hannah notices a subtle shift in their hue to a brownish tint. Dimitri assures her that such changes are part of a natural process. However, when unobserved, the scientist discreetly extracts a sample of the mother culture for further analysis. In a bid to lighten the somber atmosphere, Dimitri proposes a moment of respite with a bottle of liquor and a game of cards. Amidst the camaraderie, he shares a poignant tale of the Nebra Corporation's offer to purchase his algae for exclusive use in their protected air domes. Despite being tempted by the substantial sum, Dimitri's son Danila vehemently opposed such injustice, advocating for the universal accessibility of his father's discovery to save all lives. Dimitri confides that Gavin's demeanor reminds him greatly of his beloved son. Following the festivities, a pleasantly inebriated Hannah heads back to her cabin when a transmission from Earth interrupts her solitude. A representative of the corporation urgently implores her assistance, revealing that soldiers have evacuated approximately 300 individuals to a bunker, seeking refuge from the toxic fog engulfing the planet. With oxygen levels dwindling perilously low and morale faltering, the survivors plead for the algae's swift delivery to Earth. Inspired, Hannah and Gavin share their daring plan with Dimitri, to rescue the people stranded in the bunker. However, Dimitri's response is tempered by caution. He refuses to relinquish the algae, expressing reservations about their perilous journey to Earth without communication or the aid of artificial intelligence. For Dimitri, the risk of repeating his son's tragic fate, driven by noble intentions, is too great to bear. Suddenly, Hannah is not feeling well, and collapses. Dimitri rushes her to the laboratory for examination, suspecting a connection between the algae's altered color and Hannah's condition. As evening falls, Hannah delves into her sister's last message, probing for clues about Button's whereabouts and whether she reached the bunker. The following day, undeterred by Dimitri's apprehensions, Hannah and Gavin resolutely declare their intent to descend to Earth, irrespective of the scientist's participation. In response, Dimitri unveils the algae, now completely transformed to a deep brown hue. Revealing the startling revelation behind the change, Dimitri elucidates that Hannah is pregnant. Her hormonal fluctuations have triggered a response in the algae's mother cultures, unraveling the mystery of their transformation. Hannah refuses to believe it. She knows all too well about the Nebra Corporation's policies, including the mandatory sterilization chip implanted in their soldiers. Dimitri explains that the chip system was deactivated when communication with Earth was lost. However, returning to Earth would reactivate the chip, jeopardizing Hannah's pregnancy. Faced with an agonizing decision, Hannah resolves to forego motherhood for the greater cause of saving lives on Earth. Gavin, troubled by Hannah's sacrifice, seeks assurance that this is truly her wish. Despite her inner turmoil, Hannah remains steadfast in her conviction, acknowledging the inherent risks to the child's safety aboard the station. With preparations complete, the crew embarks on the Versta-1 landing module, poised for their return to Earth. However, during launch, a critical system overheats, precipitated by the module's malfunctioning cooling system. In a bold move, Gavin opts to disconnect the fuel tanks from within the Versta, a risky gambit to avert disaster. Despite Hannah's protests over the perilous nature of his decision, Gavin knowingly accepts the risk. Unable to bear the thought of losing Gavin, Hannah takes decisive action, blocking his access to the module. 
In the next instant, the shuttle erupts into a devastating explosion. Dimitri supports Hannah's decision, asserting that her actions saved all their lives. Conversely, Gavin expresses deep disappointment in Hannah, reproaching her for depriving the people on Earth of oxygen and survival chances. Over time, Hannah confides in Gavin about her mission. She was supposed to send a laboratory with mother cultures of algae to Earth using the uncontrolled cargo shuttle Icarus. Gavin suggests modifying the module to transport people. Despite the high risks, they agree they must attempt to save humanity. At night, Hannah wrestles with insomnia, preoccupied with the impending dangerous mission. As she wanders the station to calm her thoughts, she checks the malfunctioning cooling system and discovers signs of sabotage. Suspicions immediately fall on Dimitri, and Hannah demands explanations. Dimitri tries to justify himself, citing a simple desire to survive. He couldn't bear a repeat of his son's fate during the mission. Hannah orders Dimitri to load the mother cultures of algae aboard Icarus and accompany them to Earth. Dimitri remarks with a smirk that Hannah deliberately concealed information about another shuttle from everyone, asserting that caring about his own survival is normal. Hannah remains resolute in her determination to rescue the people in the bunker. Dimitri urges her to question why corporations are suddenly in urgent need of edible algae. He discloses that management had been aware of his research for years but chose to send Hannah into space only at this juncture. Dimitri suspects that the corporation was privy to the impending apocalypse but withheld the information to avoid having to share bunkers with the general population. You really think they would give you their algae if it was the other way around? The crew reaches out to a representative from Nebra to initiate the rescue mission. Hannah requests to speak with military leadership, emphasizing that only they can issue orders. The representative reluctantly discloses that there are no soldiers in the bunker. Following the relocation of the corporation's family members to the shelter, the military stayed behind in the contaminated zone. Hannah's convictions shatter as she realizes the absence of soldiers and questions her commitment to saving the elite's lives. For the first time, she considers her own well-being and her child's future, which leads to friction with Gavin and a heated argument ensues. Hannah, in a moment of emotional turmoil, accuses Gavin of being out of touch with the common people's needs, given his wealthy background. She suspects Gavin was deliberately assigned to a protected station to evade the consequences of the global catastrophe. Disheartened by her words, Gavin silently departs, leaving Hannah to wrestle with her thoughts. Alone in her cabin, Hannah attempts to remove a chip symbolizing her humble origins and years of service to an unethical corporation. In a pivotal moment, Gavin takes charge and initiates the launch of Icarus, persuading Hannah that it's the right course of action and urging her not to resist. With Dimitri, they reluctantly follow him onto the shuttle. However, at the final moment, Hannah refuses to proceed with the mission and halts the module's launch. Gavin, consumed by fury and desperation, resorts to extreme measures. Intentionally, he ends his own life, hoping to compel Hannah and Dimitri to proceed to Earth. This time, Hannah is unable to save her beloved, and she must bid farewell to his lifeless body as it drifts into open space. Unbeknownst to Gavin, Dimitri had anticipated such a drastic move and devised a ruse, claiming that three people are necessary to maintain life support on the ship. This strategic fabrication was intended to thwart any attempts by Gavin to harm himself. In reality, Hannah and Dimitri possess the capability to sustain life on the station by themselves. As years pass, Hannah gives birth to a healthy girl whom she names Button in memory of her younger sister. Together with Dimitri, they cultivate a nurturing environment filled with care and attention around the young girl. Despite the confined conditions of the space station, they manage to provide Button with a joyful childhood. One evening, Button inadvertently activates an old radio and picks up a signal from a child on Earth. The child relays news that certain groups of people have successfully endured and are now living in protected camps situated somewhere within the southern regions of the planet. If you found yourself in the protagonist's position, what choice would you make? Share your thoughts in the comments section below and remember to give this video a thumbs up.